So let's say your calculus teacher imposes upon you the daunting task of drawing a deta detailed sketch of the function f of x equals 1 third x cubed minus 4x. So you'll look at this and recognize that this is a cubic. So you'll figure it'll look either something kind of like that or something kind of like that. And to decide which of the two we look at the sign of the leading coefficient, it's positive. So we see it's going to be something like this first one here. And we don't know whether or not this graph will have humps, so it may actually look something like this rather than something like this. But we don't know. But we do know that for large positive large positive and large negative values of x, this function is going to be increasing. We don't know what's happening in the middle just by glancing at this equation here. But if we do some algebra to both this function and its derivative, we'll be able to glean what's happening in the middle here. So let's go ahead and set this function equal to 0. If we set f of x equal to 0, we can factor. So we have f of x is equal to, we'll pull out 1 third, 1 third x, excuse me. Here we'll have x squared minus 12 equals 0. So hopefully you can see that this is equal to 1 third x times x plus the square root of 12 times x minus the square root of 12. Again, equals 0. So our three possible values for x are 0, negative square root of 12, and positive square root of 12. 0 because 1 third x is one of the factors, so it can be 0. If 1 third x is 0, then x also must be 0. Negative square root of 12 because x plus square root of 12 is a factor. And if x plus square root of 12 is 0, then x has to be negative square root of 12. Positive square root of 12 is an answer because x minus square root of 12 is a factor. If that's a factor, and it must be, in order, in order for this product to equal 0, x minus square root of 12 can be 0. That's one way for this product to be 0. So if x minus the square root of 12 is 0, then x is equal to square root of 12. So I've gone ahead and marked our three x-intercepts of this function, also known as the zeros. And we have one at x equals negative square root of 12, so that's somewhere between negative 3 and negative 4. We have one at x equals 0, and one at x equals positive square root of 12. Again, that's that's somewhere between positive 3 and positive 4. And we know that since the leading coefficient of this function, which is again, if you can't see it, it's f of x equals 1 third x cubed minus 4x. It's a cubic with a positive leading coefficient. So we know that on this side it's, it's increasing. And here it's also increasing. So it increases for x values less than negative 4 all the way up to negative 4 and increase and it's increasing for x values they're not negative 4 I mean negative square root of 12 it's also increasing for x values greater than positive square root of 12 but what happens what happens in this middle area here to figure that out we're gonna have to look at the first derivative so f prime of x is equal to looks like x squared minus 4. If you're wondering how I got that, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. You multiply that by 1 third, you get just x squared. The derivative of 4x is 4. You subtract the 2, you have x squared minus 4. If we set that equal to 0, we'll get the location of of relative mins and maxes. So x squared minus 4 equals 0. 
or f prime f prime of x equals I guess I'm just rewriting what was above so this means that x plus 2 x minus 2 either of those can be 0 so f f prime of x is 0 when either x is negative 2 or when x is positive 2 okay so just just kind of looking at this graph if we have a uh, if if we well, well let's go ahead and plug in plug in a negative 2 for x into the expression for f of x to figure out the y value there or the value of f of x there so f of negative 2 is equal to 1 third times negative 2 cubed minus 4 times negative 2 and if I work my algebra arithmetic out correctly I mean should get 16 over 3 and that's 5 and 1 third so 3 4 5 we go up 1 third so it should be right around here so we can see we have a local we have a local maximum here this function will be coming down this way so if we kind of fill in the gaps it looks like we'll have a local minimum where x equals positive 2 let's let's figure out the value of f of x at x equals positive 2 so f of 2 is equal to 1 third times 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 and again if I did the arithmetic correctly should get negative 16 over 3 I, I'm pretty sure I worked this out earlier okay so negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 and so this is a this is the graph now what was a, a we had kind of just looked at the graph and figured out that this was a local maximum here local maximum at the point negative 2 positive 16 over 3 and a local minimum at positive 2 negative 16 over 3 but if we wanted to be absolutely sure we could actually find the second derivative and evaluate it at each of these points so f prime of x f prime of x is x squared minus 4 the second derivative f double prime of x is just 2x if we evaluate that f double prime of x at x equals negative 2 we get 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 this is less than 0 so that tells us that the function is concave down here and we have a local maximum similarly if we evaluate f double prime of x at x equals positive 2 2 times positive 2 is 4 which is greater than 0 so this tells us that the function is concave up at x equals positive 2 and we'll have a local minimum hopefully that showed you how you can use knowledge of the function zeros and its derivative in order to sketch a simple curve